salt. The thing that makes fries and popcorn so delicious. A recent study by the Centers for Disease Control looked at the eating habits of 2,142 children. It found that, on average, they, they had nearly 11 half teaspoons of sodium each day. That is 50% more than current guidelines recommended. Salt is a form of sodium. Our bodies need some salt to work properly, but too much of it is not healthy. Too much salt can lead to high blood pressure and heart disease, and the salt shaker isn't a brilliant. A lot of processed food already comes loaded with salt. <clears throat> if you want to think clearer in school and run faster on the playground, you might want to start thinking about your diet. Cutting down on processed foods and eating more fruits and vegetables can lead to immediate results. Have you ever flipped over the package and read the nutri nutrition label? It's easy. Even kids can do it. It says right there how much sodium there is and how much and what percent that is of your daily total. Start taking note of your diet and see how it makes you feel. You might be surprised by the results. And now, here's some other stories you should know about. Launched two years ago, NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft arrived at the asteroid Bennu on Monday. Its mission is to survey the asteroid ahead of retrieving pristine bits of the solar system from the rock surface and then bringing them back to Earth in the years ahead. OSIRIS-REx arrival at Bennu is not like the landing of NASA's InSight space, space, spacecraft in one piece on the surface of Mars last Monday. There should be no drama. It should be just a transition to the next phase of the mission. Osiris Rex will make a series of passes over the asteroid at a range of 4.3 miles for an initial survey to better determine its mass, rate of spin, and shape. In January, the spacecraft will get closer to Bennu, over 0.9 and 1.2 miles, and be drawn into orbit around the asteroid. It will then spend more than a year performing reconnaissance of Bennu before attempting to bounce off the surface and collect a sample of the asteroid in mid-2020. Bennu, discovered in 1999, is a carbon-rich, almost black asteroid, about 1,600 feet wide, 1,600 feet wide, that compares to the Empire State Building, which is 1,454 feet tall, including the antenna at the top. Scientists believe that is a conglomeration of leftovers from the formation of the solar system, largely unchanged over the last 4.5 billion years. Bennu is categorized as a near-Earth asteroid, and scientists say there is but a small chance that it could slam into Earth, but not until the 22nd century, if it happens at all. This may sound familiar. Japan's Hayabusa 2 was reported on the Friday show a few weeks ago. The NASA Bennu mission will also be bouncing off the surface of the asteroid in hope of collecting samples that can help scientists better understand the formation of our universe. The G20 summit is a meeting of the leaders of the top 20 economies in the world. Last week, the annual meeting occurred for the 13th time, this time in Argentina. The meeting includes the political leaders of the nations, as well as our central bank governors. The 20 include the United States, China, Russia, India, Australia, Brazil, Canada, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, Japan, Mexico, South Africa, England, Germany, France, Italy, and the European Union. Union. The aim of the meeting is to discuss the financial stability of the world. President Trump was in attendance and met with many prominent world leaders. The big event with this was his meeting with President, Chinese President Xi Jinping. A trade truce was declared between both countries, and there will be a pause on the tariffs that were imposed last year. The G20 focused on global trade this year, but also discussed helping developing nations and a worldwide tax on cryptocurrency. Next year's G20 will take place in Japan. Back in March, T-Mobile set out on a nationwide search with one mission in mind find and support trailblazing young adults who are thinking outside the box to enact lasting change in their communities. Fast forward six months and over 330 submissions and a handful of unbelievable changemakers have been chosen as the winners of this year's T-Mobile Changemaker Challenge. Each of the six selected changemaker teams have exceeded expectations and created organizations that will not only make a difference in their own communities, but also have the potential to reach and help millions around the globe their determination to make the world a better place and offer assist assistance to those in need is beyond admirable and made even more impressive by the fact that most of them are still teenagers. 
Some of the projects include art in hospitals, solar power in Puerto Rico, raising autism awareness, and even encouraging volunt volunteerism through selfies. The winners each received a prize in helping getting their project started. An American hero has left us. Last week, the 41st president of the United States died at age 94. The, de the death of George H.W. Bush, affectionately called Bush 41, after months of declining health follows less than a year after the passing of his beloved life partner, Barbara. Bush 41 served this nation for almost his entire life. As a military hero, a director of the CIA, an ambassador, a vice president, and finally as the 41st president of the United States. Mr. Bush was our president when the Berlin Wall came down and when the Soviet Union dissolved. Under his leadership, a coalition of nations was formed that led to the defeat of Saddam Hussein after he invaded Kuwait. Despite his many successes, Bush 41 was the last American president to serve only one term. As his breaking the pledge of read my lips, no new taxes, anger Democrats and Republicans alike, and led to his defeat at the hands of Bill Clinton in 1992. George Herbert Walker Bush was respected here at home and around the world. He saw his son George W. Bush become president and his other son Jeb become a successful governor, creating a political dynasty. You will be missed, Mr. President. Do you love the books of Roald Dahl? Well, I have some great news for you. Netflix has announced that they will be making animated versions of the beloved stories of the British children's author. Roald Dahl is best known for writing Matilda, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the BFG, the Twits, and many more classic tales. The new Netflix versions will be animated series as opposed to previous live-action film adaptations. Immersing ourselves in the extraordinary worlds of Roald Dahl stories has been an honor and a massive amount of fun, and we are grateful for the trust the Roald Dahl Story Company and the Dahl family have placed in our team to deliver more moments of shared joy to families around the world, commented a Netflix spokesperson. The full list of titles currently in the Netflix agreement is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda, The BFG, The Twits, Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, George's Marvelous Medicine, Boy, Tales of Childhood, Going Solo, The Enormous Crocodile, The Giraffe and the Pelly and Me, Henry Sugar, The Magic Finger, Ezoid Trot, Dirty Beasts, and Rhyme Stew. The animation ensures that these adaptations don't overlap significantly with popular film versions of Dahl's work. The series can remain faithful to the books, like with a series of unfortunate events on Netflix, and animation offers freedom for these stories to be as wild and creative as Dahl imagined them. Golden State Warriors basketball player Stephen Curry is often, na often labeled the nice guy of the NBA, and his most recent good deeds lived up to the title. When nine-year-old Riley Morrison went on Under Armour's website to order a pair of Curry 5 basketball shoes, she realized the sneakers didn't come in girl sizes, so she wrote a letter to Stephen Curry himself. In her letter, Morrison, a California native, says she plays basketball and was excited to purchase the Curry 5 shoes online before the start of her season. Unfortunately, she was upset to find on she was upset to only find his signature kicks in the boys department. Morrison's concerns did not go unanswered. In the middle of his quest to return to the court from a groin injury, Curry penned a letter right back to Little Riley, and pr he even promised her more than an update to Under Armour's website. Unfortunately, we have labeled smaller sizes as boys on the website, Curry wrote in his note. We are correcting this now. I want to make sure you can wear my kicks proudly, so I am going to send you a pair of Curry 5s now and you'll be one of the first kids to get the Curry 6. Morrison's courage paid off as Curry's young female fans can now buy the Under Armour sneakers in the girls section. It means to me that girls are strong and they can do anything they put their mind to, she said. Curry also personally extended an invitation to Morrison to celebrate International Women's Day on March 8 with him in Under Armour. Now we know exactly which special shoes she'll want to rock for the occasion. Walt Disney's iconic and adorable rodent Mickey Mouse turned 100 this year. To celebrate the mouse who started it all, the Disney Corporation recently unveiled Mickey, the true original, a 16,000 square foot art exhibition in Manhattan, New York. Open to the public from November 8, 2018 to Feb February 10, 2019, it features stunning Mickey-inspired exhibits created by over 20 artists from all over the world. 
Among the highlights is the Hello Mickey installation, which is dedicated to the mouse's big screen debut, Steamboat Willie, on November 18, 1928. The short film depicting Mimi Mickey piloting a steamboat while whistling a catchy, cheerful tune was the fir first Disney cartoon to feature synchronized sound incorporating both character sounds and musical composition. The exhibit also includes remakes of the short clip created in various styles by different artists and a life-size steamboat where visitors can test their piloting skills. Also fun is the It's Black and White exhibits, which celebrates the early Mickey black and white comic strips and the 1928 original Muse installation dedicated to Mickey's global influence throughout the years. In the Burst into Color room, fans will be treated to Mickey's fascinating transition from black and white cartoons to color, one of the most eye-catching installations the co the cosmic cavern comes from the painter comes from the american painter and street artist kenny scarf inspired by one of disney's first licensed product the mickey mouse watch it transforms the iconic timepiece into an immersive neon technicolor experience the pop-up exhibi exhibition also features a carefully curated selection of mickey mouse memorabilia from Disney's archives, providing fans with a never-before-seen glimpse into the character's evolution over the past hundred years. Disney also honored the world's most famous mouse with a two-hour television special featuring star-studded musical performances, moving tributes, and unreleased short films on November 4, 2018. The landmark birthday is also being celebrated with tie-in events in all Disney parks and resorts. Hey guys, my name is Ishan and I'm here with this week's Sports Report. In NFL news, the 49ers lost again, this time to the Seahawks 43-16. The Raiders lost to the Chiefs 40-33 on Sunday too. At this point, neither team has a chance to make to the playoffs. The 49ers will play the Broncos while the late Raiders will play the Steelers this weekend. In the NBA, the Warriors beat the Cavaliers on Wednesday 129-105. The, the Warriors will play the Bucks tonight. They are fourth place in the Western Conference, but now have Steph Curry back from injury. In the National Hockey League, the Sharks beat the Hurricanes on Wednesday 5-1. to one. They will play the Stars tonight. They are third place in the Pacific Division. That's all for sports. Hi, I'm Ananya with your weather report. Today will be mostly sunny with a high of 61 degrees, a low of 43 degrees, and a 0% chance of rain. Tomorrow will be sunny with a high of 61 degrees, a low of 43 degrees, and a 0% chance of rain. Sunday will be partly cloudy with a high of 61 degrees, a low of 47 degrees, and a 10% chance of rain. That's it for weather! Thanks, reporters. That was a lot of interesting information. We have two more weeks of school before winter break. That means we need stories, sixth graders. If you want to be on the Friday show, write up a story that about something that interests you. <clears throat> Don't forget to bring socks for Miss Gifford's sock drive in the library. She's taking donations until December 19th. Make sure they're new socks. Nobody wants your old socks. Want to keep helping? If you do your holiday shopping on Amazon, go to Forest Park's Amazon Smile page to raise money for our PTA. Smile is free and Amazon donates 0.5% of your purchase to our school. That's all we've got. See you next week.